non-dual understanding is very simple. It's the simplest thing that we can imagine. It's our own being, our own intimate experience of ourselves. But in the same time, the understanding is very complex and often only accessible to us in different layers, in different steps of understanding. To see the whole picture at once through the complexity of the whole creation, including our bodies, our minds, the world, this being, this self, how does it all relate to each other? Because even though, like in the beginning of our meeting today, we emphasize, of course, this unchanging, unharmable, untouchable, essential self, our loving awareness, this consciousness. And it's very important to recognize that as our true self, to make ourselves home there, so to speak, in our true self, to live from there, to rest in that, what I call resting in being. But we do our best here to not allow that to become a new non-dual strategy to go to get away from our problems, to get away from our body, to get away from our feelings, to get away from the world. Modern non-duality, sometimes called neo-advaita, has a tendency to focus on the simplicity, which is not essentially a bad thing, no criticism to focus on the one thing which is not a thing, only on this, which is aware, this loving awareness, what I call loving awareness, this pure consciousness, the self, traditionally called Atma, or Brahman. I say no criticism because we also emphasize a lot of that. We need to become clear of who or what we are, what is real, what is the reality of the world, what is the reality of my avatar, what is the reality of my body, what is the reality of my mind. This is, of course, very important. But if we only focus, so to speak, on the self, only the self is real and everything else is unreal. Only the self matters, the world, my body, my feelings, they are not real, they don't matter. Many, many fell in the trap through this exclusive approach to have found a new extension, so to speak, of the old habit to get away from my problems, to get away from my feelings. The ego adapts to the non-dual teachings and uses them to keep fragmenting 
myself, to fragment myself into I am only this pure consciousness and all of that which I don't like about the world and myself is not pure consciousness. So I'm not going to deal with it. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to live with it. If it would be so easy, right? Some of us may try that. The magic of this maya, of this illusion of separation is that it has a strong power to convince us. In thought, in feeling and in perception of the reality of duality, of the reality of separation, of the reality of me being here and the world being something outside of me. This confused reality, this ignorance, so to speak, crystallizes, it becomes our actual experience. It feels that we are separate. It thinks that we are separate. It, it thinks that it's also dramatically important, this situation, this itch on my big toe must be something very serious. And all of that, so to speak, manifest duality, crystallized illusion, it doesn't go away just by abandoning it, turning away from it. We've tried that in ignorance already to get away from our feelings, thoughts that we don't like. Get away from our body what we don't like. It didn't work. So here we want to make sure that yes, we really firmly land in non-dual understanding. Sometimes I'm almost a bit reluctant to use the word non-dual because this Neo-Advaitic approach has invited so much spiritual bypassing to happiness. Spiritual bypassing in the sense of trying to bypass my thoughts, feelings, and perceptions that I don't like. So we're trying our very best here to establish ourselves deeply, firmly rooted in this non-dual understanding, but we try to show the big picture. How does this pure consciousness, this loving awareness relate to the world, Jagat. How does it relate to this avatar, to this jiva? How does it relate to my feelings? How does it relate to relationships, to my work, to my talents, to my 
creativity, how does it all fit in together in this? Reality of it all being one. 